Let's go to our first transformer problem in the fourth year. This comes from section 4-2. It's transformer number 10. Transformer problem number 10. And you can see we've got a 4160 system. Three phase, four wire. That four wire tells us it's a Y system. The system voltage is always a phase-to-phase -phase value, so we've got a phase-to-phase -phase value of 4160. We divide that by 1.73, we'll have the phase-to-ground value, which would be 2400 volt. So let's label our voltages. Phase-to-phase, -phase, we have 4160. Phase-to-ground, we have 2400 volt. All right, now we've got transformers here, the rating of those transformers. They're 10 kVA each. We have uh, high side rated at 2400 4160Y. And that tells us then that if we had a 4160 system, we connect it Y. So we need a Y diagram on the high side. We'll just draw our Y high side in there like this. Try and draw it kind of graphically halfway accurate. Doesn't have to be to any scale. We try and get it halfway close. We can label in our phases A, B, and C, and of course they always have to be in the clockwise direction because that's the way they're generated. Uh, we know from the rating of our secondary that the phase value, the full value is used for for that rating. In other words, we're going to have to have full value out of this transformer down here to get 240 volt. So that means that our internal connections are going to have to be connected to series to get that full value. But we know that we're using the full value of that transformer. So that means that this low side connection will be delta. If it's 1 to 2, or the full value of the transformer, which it is, then we know that it's a delta connection. So what we're going to have here is a Y delta connection, and we want a standard displacement. If you will remember, if we have Y delta, standard is the least possible displacement, so we know that our phases are all going to shift. We'll have a phase displacement of 30 degrees. That means A is going to rotate in the clockwise direction 30 degrees. B is going to rotate 30 degrees and C rotate 30 degrees. We're going to have a diagram that's going to look like this. And we know that being we want three wire instead of four wire that there's going to be one corner grounded. We need a ground somewhere on our system for, for safety. So down here on the low side, let's draw the diagram the way it's supposed to be and it'll look roughly like that. And our A is going to be there, our B there, and our C and our neutral are going to be one and the same now. Now any one of those three could have been grounded. Our, our low side, you see here, we've got this one already grounded, so we're going to use that, but it really doesn't have to be C. It could be A or B as well. So to match our drawing here, we want to ground out our our C phase. So what we'll do is throw a ground right on that. We can throw a ground anywhere on that thing as long as we only have one on there. So it can be on a phase or it could be center tap. If we center tap one of those transformers, then that would make it four wire. Then what we would have up here would be 120, 240, three phase, and then instead of three wire, it would be four wire. All right. Now we've got our drawing, our diagrams drawn. We can label our transformers in there. Well, this doesn't make any difference which way, which way we go with our transformers as long as the high and the low side match. In other words, the parallel vectors represent the same phase angle or the same transformer, if you will. So we'll label this one T1, this one T2, and this T3. The corresponding winding for uh, transformer 1 would be this one because it's parallel, so I'll label that T1. 
this one here and uh, this vector down here are corresponding so this would be T2 and this would be T3 to label it for our terminals and there again as long as they go the same direction we don't really care which way we're okay so let's let's put our H1's on the outside all the way around and then we'll have our H2 inside and we have a, a wide delta connection which means we either have the option of either floating it or grounding it let's just ground it out we won't float the high side in this case there's advantages and disadvantages to to floating now we're going east with transformer one on the high side that means we have to go in the same direction down below in other words, low number to high number, we're going east. So let's go uh, down below. We'll have a, uh, X1 to X3. We have a three bushing transformer on the low side. And then X1 to X3, X1 to X3. Now we've completed our diagram. The thing to do is to make our high side connections the same way. Let's go up here and label this transformer for bushings. And uh, of course, H1 is always in the same place and same way with H2 if you have that bushing. We want to ground out everything. We'll ground all this out. We want to make sure our tubs are safe to work on. Okay, we want full value out of that transformer, so we're going to connect the internal connection series like this. And of course, because we have a transformer under 200 kVA, in other words, these are tens, and we know the coil voltage down here from the way we've connected onto our to our high side system, phase to ground on that system, right here tells us that it's 2400 volt. So we know that our coil voltage down here is going to be 2400 volt. We'll just label that right now, 2400 volt. Okay, back to our identifying our terminals. Additive transformer, because it's under 200 kVA and under 9000 volt, that means this is X1, X2, and X3. Let's connect our high side. We want to go by our diagram. And you can see by our diagram that all the H2s are tied together and grounded. So we'll take all our H2s up here and we'll tie them all together and then ground them. By our diagram down here, we know that transformer one is connected, H1 is connected to A phase. So we'll run this right up to A phase like this tie it right on. Transformer 2, H1 goes to B. And transformer 3, H1 goes to C. And we have our high side connections made according to our diagram. Make sure you go by your diagram. Now for the low side, what we want to do, transformer 1, X1 ties to A. Here's X1. It comes down and ties to A like that. Transformer number one, X3 ties to B. X3 over here comes down to B. And we'll connect that on. Transformer two, X1 ties to B. Transformer two, this is one, two, and three. So transformer two, X1, ties to B. We'll come all the way down like this. X3 on transformer 2 goes to our ground and our C or one and our same. So we'll bring this on down like this. Transformer 3, X1, also ties to our C and our neutral. So we'll bring that on down. X1 comes right down like this. And then we go back to our, our X3 here, comes back, we're right back where we started from in voltage. Now we're all the way down to A like this. Then we have our high 
and uh, our low side connection made up. The next thing we can do is to identify our voltages that we have available. And what we want to do is look at this diagram that we just made up as though it's graphically accurate. We haven't got it to any scale, but uh, it's graphically accurate if we've done a reasonable job in, in our drawing of our diagram. Okay, up here we're asked for the voltage from A to our neutral. Down here you see our neutral and our C are one and the same. So we're, we want to know what the voltage is from A to our neutral, and that's that full vector. And we know that, of course, we've connected our transformer up series, so we have 2,400 volts across there. So up here we would want to indicate 24, 240 volt, I mean. We know that, that on the low side here that that vector represents 240 volt. B to our neutral is the same thing. It's the value of transformer 1 and it's connected series, so we know we have 240 volt. So let's put that in there, 240 volt. Down here, our neutral and our C are tied together, so there is reference to it. So if they're tied together, they're at the same potential, so we'd put zero for a voltage. Phase to phase all the way around, then of course we'd have 240 volt. Then we have our voltages identified now as well on our low side. Down here, what we want to do is come up with our primary coil current. And we're going to use our power formula. Remember our basic power formula, P is equal to EI. I'm looking for current. I'm going to isolate my I. I is equal to P divided by E. And, of course, our power is going to be the rating of our transformer. We would take 10,000 and divide it by, by our, uh, our coil voltage, which is indicated here. If we do that, and of course all three tubs being the same, we'll have three coil currents at 4.2. We can round them off. We want to go to the nearest tenth. We have a Y connection, so we know that, that, uh, that our line current and our coil current are the same. So we'll put it down again. We'll have three, four, point two, and of course we're dealing with amps here. Now what we want to do for our fuse size is multiply this 4.2 times 1.25 and if we do that we'll come up with 3 then at 5.3 amp. And if we do that we're, we've got our, we've got our our transformer problem done. Uh, as far as fuses, you go to the closest size fuse you've got. In this case, you'd probably use a 5 amp fuse. But for your problems here, go to the nearest tenth till you get above 10. And when you get into double numbers, then just round it off to the nearest whole number. Then we'll go on to the next problem. While we're on the subject of fusing, I want to bring this point out. You remember on transformers that I said that you would multiply times 1.25 to get your fuse size. In a capacitor bank, and of course they're going to be rated instead of KVA, they're going to be rated in KVARs which is also a unit of measure of power, so you can use the same formula, same power formula. Uh, in, in, a, in a capacitor bank, what you're going to do is multiply that fuse times 1.5. So you'll multiply 1.5 to get your fuse size for a capacitor. Don't get those two mixed up. For a capacitor, you'll see that unlike a transformer, that load current is on there at all times. And you need that extra margin to, to protect that capacitor.